I started moon planning on October 1st, 2020. It was a full moon and it was the mid-autumn festival. When I started this practice, I really only had a vague idea of why I was doing this. I knew I wanted to check in with myself more frequently than once a year when I do my goal setting and also with a more thoughtful and structured approach than my daily morning pages practice, which is essentially just a brain dump. I was looking for something in between and I thought the lunar cycle might be an interesting interval to try because because new moons and full moons happen regularly throughout the year. They're spaced about two weeks apart, so I thought that might provide me with a really good rhythm of checking in with myself. I started to do some research and I found both scientific and spiritual reasons for why I might want to try this. On the scientific side, the moon affects the earth in a number of different ways. The most obvious perhaps being the tides because of the gravitational pull. And because such a big part of our human physiology is made up of water, Cleveland Clinic tells me it's about 55 to 78 percent water. So if the moon has the power to affect tides in such a significant way, I can see the logic that it also has the power to affect us as humans. So that was really intriguing to the scientific part of my brain. In terms of the spiritual side, I read a lot about using the moon to manifest your dreams, your desires, your hopes. The moon is related to harvests. So that whole harvesting, celebrating, manifesting aspect really appealed to my spiritual side because I have been looking to reconnect with that part of myself. I did a bunch of research back in 2020 and I landed on a moon planning practice. I do this practice on every new moon and every full moon, and I've been doing it for now over four years. So I wanted to share my practice with you in case it's helpful. I have an entire write-up on my website, including two worksheets, one for the new moon and one for the full moon. I've mainly been using my moon planning practice as a way to regulate my emotions and prepare for the two weeks ahead. There's a really clear rhythm, a cycle, if you will, that has emerged. Let's start with new moon planning because the new moon is really seen as the start of the lunar cycle. This is when the moon and the sun are on the same side of the earth. The moon is in the sky, but we don't see it because of the way the light reflects off of it. It doesn't reflect towards us because it's on the same side of the earth as the sun. Instead, the light is reflecting away from us. Because the new moon marks the beginning of the lunar cycle, it's typically a time for dreaming. So there are reflective questions that I answer on every every new moon and these questions are what does your heart truly desire how do you want to feel moving forward what dreams wishes intentions and goals do you want to manifest what specific projects and tasks will you focus on during this lunar cycle the waxing crescent moon is when the alignment of the moon and the sun start to shift such that we see a tiny crescent in the sky and waxing just means that it is growing the theme that I came up with for the waxing crescent moon is courage. So what actions are you taking to align yourself with your dreams, wishes, intentions, and goals? How can you build courage and determination to follow through with your plans? It's great to have dreams. It's great to want things in life, but you also need to find some way to take action. And that often requires a lot of courage. Perhaps it's courage to express yourself creatively. It could also be courage to initiate a conversation. Those are a couple of examples where courage is needed to move you forward. And I find that right after dreaming, because you are feeling excited, about your dream and about your hopes and desires, this is a great time to find that courage to build off of that excitement that you already have. The first quarter moon happens when we see half the moon. So that is the first quarter essentially of the lunar cycle. The theme I chose for the first quarter moon is momentum. So what challenges or obstacles do you anticipate will arise during this time? How will you overcome the challenges and obstacles in your path? Is there anything holding 
holding you back that you need to let go of, how can you continue to build momentum? I find that after the courage phase, I often feel a little dip in my motivation. So this is where I like to be prepared by anticipating what challenges I might feel during this time. I want to try to maintain my momentum through this dip of energy or of mood. And finally, the waxing gibbous moon. This is almost a full moon and it is growing in terms of the amount of light that's reflected towards earth. The general theme that I chose for the waxing gibbous moon is adaptability. The reflective questions are have your desires changed and if so how? What adjustments, tweaks, or refinements do you need to make to your intentions, goals, projects, and tasks? In what way will you course correct or recommit to your dreams? So for me, dreams and goals are a funny thing. I go through periods of ups and downs where I think my ideas are great and sometimes Sometimes I think my ideas are really silly and I want to scrap them. So this is where I'm giving myself a chance to make tweaks, adjust things, recommit to what I say I want to do. And I find this part really helpful, especially leading into the full moon. I don't know if I was very clear about this, so I want to mention before we do move on to the full moon that I do this moon planning. So I fill out this entire template on the new moon. So I would have done this on October. October 2nd filled out this entire sheet and the reason for that is because I am planning ahead this is my new moon planning so I'm planning for the next two weeks I'm looking at my calendar at what I have coming up and I'm trying to anticipate how I'm going to feel what obstacles might come up and how I might want to course correct so I'll just do a quick example to take you through exactly what I mean on October 2nd I will have filled out all of the dates that's the first thing I do when I open this template and then I answer the first set of reflective questions I answer this in the present. What are my dreams right now? What project do I want to do right now? What am I working on? What am I focused on? And right now I'm really excited about a new project that's coming up. It's a 31 day challenge called 31 days to 2025. And I'm starting to create that challenge because it's going to launch on December 1st. So I will write a few details about that, my hopes and dreams for that. And then moving on to courage, I will take a look at my calendar. What do I have planned between October 3rd and 9th? What might I want to do during this time that's going to require a bit of courage? And I decided I would send out a newsletter to the people who have already signed up for the challenge and I decided I wanted to send that out on October 8th. So every time I put something out in the world, whether it be a YouTube video or whether it be a newsletter or even a post on Instagram, I feel a lot of nerves about that. It's always difficult for me to put myself out there. So that is one act of courage, sending out that newsletter and setting up the automation that I planned for the October 3rd to 9th time period. For momentum on October the 10th, I did take a look at the calendar and I saw that was a Thursday. It also happened to be two days before my vacation. So I anticipate that a lot of things will come up at my paid job because I'm trying to wrap things up before my time off. I'm only taking a week off, but there are things that need to be done in that time. So I would identify that as one of the challenges or obstacles to me completing the work that I want to do around this challenge. There are a lot of things that I want to get done but I think I'm going to probably need to take a pause and it may affect my momentum. So I just want to notice that going forward. I don't really have a specific plan for it, but being aware of it helps me feel more at peace with that, knowing that my momentum is probably going to dip during this time. That leads in really well to adaptability October 11th to 16th. I'm going to be on vacation during this time. This is just a short road trip, but every time I'm on vacation, I do need to adapt because it's a very big change in my routine and I'm not going to have as much time for my creative projects. So that's what I mean by using moon planning to help regulate my emotions. I know these things are coming up that are going to distract me from my goals and I'm okay with them. I do love the work I do for my paid job and I do love, of course, being on vacation 
education. So I'm very happy to do these things, but I know that time is limited and my energy and motivation is limited. So I'm going to lower the bar during this time and not put so much pressure on myself because I know there are going to be times in the future where I can catch up. So that is the new moon planning. Let's move on to full moon planning. And I'm going to go through this more quickly because I've talked you through essentially the process that I do. The process for full moon is exactly the same. It's just that the themes or the keywords and the reflective questions are different. As I'm recording this video, the next full moon will be on October the 17th. And the theme for the full moon is gratitude. What are you grateful for? What progress are you celebrating? Have you experienced any moments of synchronicity? What emotions are you feeling? So the full moon is a time for harvest. It's a time to be grateful for the bounty that you've received and to celebrate the abundance in your life. So that is the general theme on the full moon. And once again, I will fill out this entire sheet on the full moon. So I'm essentially planning for the next two weeks ahead. Right after the full moon is the waning gibbous moon. So this is a big moon that is starting to to get smaller. The theme for the waning gibbous moon is connection. So a time of celebration is also a time of gathering and connection, but I am huge on self-reflection and inner work. So I take connection beyond just connecting with other people. You can also connect with yourself during this time. The reflective questions are, how can you express kindness to yourself and those around you? How can you share your experiences to better connect with the people in your life? How can you better connect with yourself? The third quarter moon is all about release and once again we're seeing half the moon illuminated here the reflective questions are are you noticing any conflicts habits behaviors or patterns of thought that you need to let go of what do you want to carry forward with you and what do you want to gently release is there anything toward which you need to practice forgiveness by this time we are starting to lead back into the new moon so this is a great time to think about what do you want to let go of what could potentially be holding you back from your hopes and your dreams your desires and your goals maybe you want to gently start to release some of these things you might not be able to do it all right away letting go is a very difficult process and it often takes a lot of time but even just by planting the seed and thinking about some of the things you want to let go of as you continue to do moon planning you will notice some patterns come up and eventually it becomes easier to let go and finally the last phase of the moon we're going to talk about is the waning crescent moon so this is where half the moon was illuminated and we're starting to see less and less of it until we see a crescent again and because we are so close to the end of this lunar cycle we're so close to the next new moon and starting the cycle over again it is really important during this time to rest the reflective questions are what do you need to allow yourself to fully rest and restore How how can you create an environment of gentleness, compassion, and healing? What reflections do you have during this lunar cycle? So this is where I look ahead in my calendar and I see what I have planned for this time. Sometimes I do have a lot of engagements during this time, but I make a really conscious effort to find pockets of time where I can rest. And then we're back into the new moon and we start the cycle over again. So I have been doing this for over four years now and I can say that it has really helped me move my projects forward. So in this four year period, I wrote my book. I went through the entire book as a reader. I'm on the last chapter right now, and I'm dreaming of this new challenge that's coming up. And those are just some of my creative projects. I've also made a lot of changes in my life, things that I'm really happy with that make me feel very fulfilled and at peace. Of course, it's not all moon planning, but the moon planning definitely helps because you are regularly checking in with yourself essentially every two weeks. That is going to be it for this video. I will leave all of the links down below to where you can find these templates. They're on Google Drive so you can either print them out or you can save them to your own computer and fill out the sheet there. Once you have it on your computer, you can work with it as you wish. If you want, you can even change the keywords or the reflective questions. You can increase or decrease the spacing. This is just what I use and what works for me. 
and I understand that we are all different. All that to say, please do feel free to modify the template. That is going to be it for today. Thank you so much for watching this video. I will be back very soon with another one. Until then, please take care and bye for now.